lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Thanks. I mean, it's not actually Thanksgiving anymore, but <laughs> I, yeah. I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. Yes. That's the way I should <laughs> um, phrase that. And happy Black Friday. Oh, yeah. I, I see you're celebrating with your black shirt. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> you too. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is all I wear, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, happy Black... We can still say Black Friday, right? That's not a... I, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the alternative is. I don't know either, so, yeah. I guess we'll stick with that till they come up with something else. Till the, till the powers that be tell us to call it something new. Yeah. So. Yeah. Man. I don't know. This one's a positive one, though, right? So it's okay? Maybe. Like, <laughs> oh. I don't know. Well, speaking of black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> May as well jump Let's right in there. Let's just dive on in, right? Yeah. We got we got some stuff to talk about. Um, and race is a huge part of all of it, even though race isn't really a huge part of any of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the first, of course, would be the Rittenhouse uh, trial. Yeah. And I'm just... I'm just amazed at this. And like one of those things is that I, I think that people that are upset about this can't have paid any attention to what happened. Well, and that's that's been my experience. So especially like I dwell kind of in the comments section of the Facebook and some of these places. God, just what a terrible place to be. It's, it's a horrible place. But I, but I like to get an idea of what what people are thinking and saying and mm -hmm. you know and it's interesting to me i just find it interesting and um but you can only look at it for so long because some of that stuff will just make you physically ill yeah <laughs> um but i do think you make a good point that that there's a ton of people out there who didn't watch the trial mm -hmm. or anything and i you know i get that people are busy but just trust them what the media said and dude like they're completely misinformed. Yeah. And well, like, this is what the media says. The media says that white supremacist Kyle Rittenhouse crossed state lines with an AR-15 to kill black people at the Black Lives Matter protests. And the Black Lives Matter protests were happening over the police's murder of the unarmed black man, Jacob Blake. And uh, while Rittenhouse was over there, he killed two, injuring a third, and uh, he was freed because of a racist judge and a legal system that favors whites. I'm telling you right now, if if any of that was true, this would be a completely different story. Like mm -hmm. if, if he had went over there with the intent, with the gun he had, mm -hmm. to kill a bunch of people, he would have killed a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, for one, like, I mean, the, the fact that he only shot two people and, like, wounded one... Mm -hmm. um, when he was being attacked is it like says something like or should to to any like casual observer yeah. like anybody who hasn't even really kept up mm -hmm. like that should be pretty clear yeah you know well i mean there's okay so like every every single part of that you're right is wrong yeah um except that it was an ar15 yeah yeah oh, got, and then he the... he killed two and injured a third yeah. um although the media cleverly after talking about how he went across state lines to kill black people and he killed two and injured a third fails to mention that none of the people that were shot were black were black yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> like he did a really bad job right yeah i mean but they lead you to believe it oh, in yeah. the way they present it yep um even though that's not the case uh the white supremacist thing there's no evidence anywhere. No, in fact, um, that he. I don't know if you kept up or heard because I haven't listened to the interview. But mm -hmm. um, he did. Kyle did an interview with um, ah, that Tucker Car Carlson. Mm -hmm. and I haven't listened. Anyway. I haven't really listened, but I've seen some snippets, dude. Rittenhouse seems like he's a pretty progressive guy. Yeah. Well, he's from a multiracial family, as I understand. <laughs> yeah. It too, so like I, he's he had a lot of interesting things to say. I, I'm going to go mm -hmm. and listen to it at some point. I wish I had before this podcast so I could kind of speak to more of it. Yeah. But like he's the guy in, the, in by any means a racist. In fact, one of the quotes I saw, he said something about, um, yeah, if uh, if a black guy had been accused of the same type thing and had the same type of district attorney mm -hmm. that he had, mm -hmm. that that they probably be in jail that he was he said something about being lucky to have the resources to fight a, a district attorney that's that was going after somebody so hard wow I, 
I'm not sure that that's true. If the facts had been the same in the case, it, well, they wouldn't. Have, <laughs> well, the point is though, they wouldn't have went after him so hard if the facts had been different in the case. But mm -hmm. the but what he the point he was getting at is an aggressive district attorney mm -hmm. can can screw you, well, and and that was that I think was, he did. Well, I think he did, but mm -hmm. um, but that was the but yeah. But I mean, he still ended up getting off in the end. Mm -hmm. Um, it's and that because was, there was there was no there was no case. That's well, that, I mean, it, it's a case that shouldn't have even been brought. Yeah. A in fact, I would say the opposite. I bet that if I would think that if it had been a black man instead of Kyle Rittenhouse that had been yeah. in that position, they wouldn't have brought a case at all. Well, no. Because it would have been such a clear cut case of self defense that they wouldn't have bothered trying to try it. And they were trying to try it because it was a political case, because yeah. it was a white guy at a Black Lives Matter uh, protest. I wholeheartedly That's why it was even I wholeheartedly tried. agree with that. There was a bunch of political pressure on the district attorney to try the case. And that's the only reason he did so. Yeah. And it was stupid of him to do so anyway. Yeah. But I guess he couldn't not. Yeah. In this it's not going to help his career either way. So <laughs> yeah, I think right. he probably should have just left it alone. Yeah. But, you know. No, agreed on all. I agree with all of that. But the but what I think more what he's getting at is there are district attorneys that just go after people mm -hmm. for for whatever reason, for whatever they plan to gain from it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it here locally mm -hmm. where the district attorney goes after somebody over something that's clear that they're clearly innocent of yeah. and just tries to force the case. And, and we were lucky in this um, circumstance too, that we had a more sympathetic judge that was willing to at least make the case a fair case, Yeah, you know, and not let in a bunch of stuff that didn't need to be let in. Yeah. Uh, because that's not always the case. Normally, especially like locally around here, mm -hmm. man, like you're dealing with um, with attorneys and judges and, and all of these people and DAs that are all kind of working together for whatever goals they're working towards, you know? Yeah. People get railroaded all the time. Oh, no, that's absolutely true. Um, it, I don't think that it's generally true when there's so much evidence as there was in this case, all these oh, videos and so agreed. forth. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, it, which is uh, important in the other case that we're going to talk about tonight too. But, um, you know, the cross state lines thing, cross state lines with an AR-15. First off, that's yeah. not true. He didn't cross the lines with the rifle. The rifle yeah. <laughs> came from the side that he ended on. Exactly. Um, but the cross state lines, I guess it makes it sound worse. Yeah. But it's entirely meaningless. Well, it, well, on top of it being meaningless, the reason they keep saying that is because it gives the impression that the mm -hmm. guy traveled like across the country yeah. to, to do this. Yeah, it, when the it's fact supposed is, to speak to some kind of intent. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, but the truth is, is it's no different than like when you live on the border like we mm -hmm. do with Florida. You're over there all the time. Yeah, well, you know? he, he worked there and his father lives there. Exactly. Like, so it's, it's not like it was real unusual. Besides the fact, that, you know, I, I think it doesn't make any difference whether I drive from here to Pensacola yeah. or here to Huntsville. Yeah. Now, if I drive from here to Huntsville to do something, I probably had a greater intent to do something there because that's like a six hour drive. Yeah. If I drive from here to Pensacola, it's like a 40 minute drive, even though I cross state lines. Exactly. And, and besides that, the whole point of the United States of America is that there's not supposed, it doesn't matter. Like the state yeah. lines aren't relevant to your ability to travel or they're exactly. not supposed to be. That's changed a lot in the last two years. But yeah. Um, anyway, the, the idea is that you can cross back and forth across state lines and they're, they're just lines on a map here. Yeah. Um, so it's it's an irrelevant piece of information, but it's it's presented to suggest that there's something deeper going on yeah. or that it's a greater crime because he crossed state lines. And yeah. none of that's true. Um, he didn't go there to kill black people. <laughs> he went there to protect property, which I, I mean, I think that's like this weird kind of idealistic you know, thing. like when I was when I jumped in the car after 9-11 to drive to New York and. Yeah. Got talked out of that. Um, but what good was I going to, I mean, I actually, I'd, I'd been an EMT. I guess I could have been some good there, but everybody yeah. was doing it. So, well, you know, I'd just gotten in the way in the end. Yeah. And, but, you know, I was young ish, younger. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was in my well, 20s. You, you and, thought you had something to offer. Yeah. Uh, because that's, that's what, and that, in this case with the written house, that's the whole reason he was there, mm -hmm. is he thought he had something to offer. I mean, he went, he went over there to put out fires and, mm -hmm perform EMT stuff were needed. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, you know, and it, it, it was happening right in his backyard. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even like he had to go far to do it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It was like a 20 minute drive for him. I think. Yeah, yeah, 
Exactly. It's like crossing the bay. Yeah. Um, the, the BLM protests. So yeah. Then the description of that over the police murder of an unarmed black man. Um, this is Jacob Blake. Uh, there, first off, Oh, uh, they usually say shot in the back by police, uh, unarmed black man shot in the back by police. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So the reason the police were there is because they'd been called about a domestic disturbance. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, something this, like that. I'm trying to remember back to this particular incident, mm-hmm. but uh, but I do remember it. And I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was that's that yeah, cuz he's the one yeah, they had called the police over, yeah. Yeah. Um and he he admitted on primetime television um uh, with uh the guy that used to be a football player that's now a news guy Strahan. Ah, oh, Strahan, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um he told him that he was going for a knife. <laughs> yeah. Like in an interview, like yeah. so, uh, you know, the and the reason they shot him is because they were telling him he's the one that he was, wasn't cooperating, and he was entering his car. Yeah, I was gonna say um, he's the one that was trying to get in the to the car whenever he mm-hmm. was being told directly not to. Yeah, yeah and not he just he was completely. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. and he yeah. was going for a weapon, which yeah. he admitted. Yeah. <laughs> well. Like, what do you expect? And um, now, I, I don't put a whole lot of stock into this anyway because, it's, you know, it's police involved. So yeah. the now, if you want to talk about a justice system that doesn't work the same way for somebody. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, all of the, uh, the police officers involved were exonerated yeah. from this. They said it was a justified shoot. Yeah. And, you know, so the, the way that's being presented is not is not accurate either. No. Um, of course it wasn't at the time, which is, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think it, it could have led to some protests that wouldn't have been protests if the information had been presented accurately to begin with. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the, then he's freed because of a racist judge and a legal system that only works for whites. Well, that's just, yeah. I mean, that's just fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. I don't know where to start to argue against that because there's just no evidence whatsoever. Yeah, to support any of it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Now, I I think that they came to the right conclusion in this case because the only question that really matters. Now, uh, the other thing is that you can go back. Like a lot of people have been talking about, you know, the the um, criminal backgrounds of these people that were shot. Yeah. Um. I don't know how much of that was allowed into the case. You watched more of the case. I, I don't think they let much of that in at all. Well, yeah. and I don't think that they should. No, I agree. Um, I, I don't um, think it's relevant in this in this case. But, I didn't see where it came up. In, no, like I said, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I never saw where the, any of that was brought up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, but they talk about Rittenhouse's background a little bit. I don't think that was in the case either, but we are not a courtroom, and so we yeah. can talk about this a little well, they, bit. Well, and they, they did talk about Rittenhouse's background a, a fair amount, but mm-hmm. mainly because that was why he was... They, the background stuff as far as why he was there. Yeah. It came up a good bit in the case. Well, I mean, the you know, some history of violence that he punched some girl that was in a fight with his sister. Oh, I don't think um, none of that was let in. Yeah. Just talking um, about, like, his work as a, a volunteer firefighter and, like, that type of stuff. Like, yeah. the, his EMT training. Like, that type of stuff was mm-hmm. in the case. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but one of these guys that he shot was uh, um, a serial... Uh, pedophile Mm -hmm. uh child rapist yeah um there was i mean like these don't these guys don't have great backgrounds and i I don't think that it's relevant to the case because there's only one thing really relevant to the case but i do think it's it's relevant as we're talking about this in in retrospect the type Um, of people who were out there yeah and it speaks to what their motives were yeah like you know these people that had violent or criminal histories yeah. were they out there because they were really on board with the black lives matter protest or were they out there to make trouble because that's something that they enjoy doing. Yeah. And I think that that's a reasonable question to ask. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it does have, it does have some relevance, um, as we talk about the results, but the question that matters in the case and mm-hmm. which is, I think a good, a good thing that none of this was allowed into the courtroom um, the only thing that matters is who is the aggressor. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only question that you're trying to answer here is yeah. who is the aggressor. Now yeah. there's some weird stuff that's come up too. Like why did he shoot the guy four times instead of just once and so forth? And that, yeah. Like there's no, <laughs> well in the um, heat of the moment you can't like, yeah, you don't know yeah. you, in a self-defense you were allowed to, um, fire until the threat is neutralized. Yeah. 
And that's in your own head when the threat is neutralized. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's hard to, like, you don't, <laughs> if it were me. Yeah. And I, I would think that if it were any of you out there in the audience either, um, if somebody is attacking you and you have a gun, you're not going to fire once and see if that stops him or not. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, well, let's give him a second to see if he's had enough. No, yeah. no. You just, yeah. you keep pulling the trigger. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and if you don't think that way, then you should start thinking that way, <laughs> honestly. <Yeah. laughs> like if, you know, if I were... Okay, so I remember reading, I can't remember the guy's name now, but, you know, my dad, who who taught firearms, told us the same thing. Yeah. Um, he's like, y- you keep pulling the trigger until he stops. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, stops. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I remember reading some other guy that taught uh, self-defense courses, um, firearm self-defense courses, or home home defense, or whatever. I can't remember exactly what the titles were, but anyway. Defense, yeah. Yeah. Um, he said... Uh, he said, <laughs> this all kind of came out together. Um, so I'll share it all. He's like, uh, don't ever say, I have a gun. Yeah. Let that first sound that the person invading your home hears is the safety clicking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I think that you shouldn't even have the safety on personally, but that, you know, I live in a house with no children, so that, you know, that's scenario. a little easier. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, and he said, uh, and once you decide that it's time to pull the trigger, you keep pulling the trigger until there's nothing happening when you pull the trigger. Yeah. He, he meant fire until you're out of rounds. Yeah. yeah. Um, he said, if he's going to, if you're going to be advanced on by the intruder, they need to advance through a hail of gunfire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. And I recommend the same thing. Like it, when yeah. you start pulling the trigger, when you've decided it's time that you need to pull the trigger, you yeah. keep pulling the trigger. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Until it is definitely done. <laughs> yeah. I had a dream about this one time. Did I tell you? No, I don't think so. Okay. So I have very, I, like, I dream very vividly, and I dream just about every night. Yeah. Um, I had a dream that uh, somebody was trying to break into this house, yeah. which is actually also kind of unusual because, you know, home is a weird thing in dreams. Like, home, yeah. most of the time in my dreams, is some semblance of the house that I grew up in, not the house that I live in now. Yeah. But anyway, I had a dream one night in this house that somebody was trying to break in through my bedroom window. Yeah. And I got my pistol, um, and I came back out, and I, and I pointed the gun at the person, and they backed away. Yeah. So I let the gun down. And then he started trying to come in through the window again. (laughs) So then I started firing. Yeah. And it was like, bang, 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 bang. And I kept shooting until the person stopped moving. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) In the dream. In the dream, yeah. Um, Yeah. This hasn't happened in real life. But honestly, like, I woke up feeling pretty good about that. Yeah. It was like, okay, well, I mean. My instincts tell me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hesitate. And I, you know, as long as, and I kept pulling the trigger until I was sure that there was no threat anymore. Yeah. Um, so he's perfectly within his rights to do that. Yeah. Uh, it's still, it's still self-defense as long as he's not the aggressor. Yeah. And, um, they tried to make a case that he had, uh, instigated it, even though he didn't, you know, take the first shot as it were. Yeah. Although he did actually take the first shot, but you know what I mean? Yeah. The first Um, movement. Yeah. You know, and, uh, they didn't make a very good case for it, which is why it fell flat. Yeah. And honestly, I'm not even sure. I've been debating this in my own head. Like, even if that takes away your right to self-defense. Yeah. Like, if you go and you're talking trash and you, like, get people pissed off at you yeah. and you're carrying a gun and they attack you, yeah. is it, like, are you still not entitled to, like, <sighs> even, even if you provoke them, provocation was the is the legal term that they're using, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, even if you provoked the attack. Yeah. It's not like he had a hidden weapon. It was yeah. on his. It was on his shoulder. Yeah. I mean, it's like right out there in front. Everybody knew he had a yeah. gun. Well, I think the fact that it is not concealed would have have an impact on how, in my mind at least. Now, legally, yeah. I have no clue. But in my mind, like, yeah, if even if you're out there talking a bunch of smack, if you got a big gun on your hip, or in his case, like mm-hmm. shouldered, yeah. Um, yeah, you you knew not to attack that guy. Yeah. Like, I mean. Like that would tell you. Now it may be. I, I may feel a little differently about it if you have a concealed weapon mm-hmm. and you're like in a bar or something messing with folks. Yeah. And then you end up using that gun. Yeah. Um. I, I might would feel a little differently about that. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Like. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it, the legal question is is 
is set aside. Yeah. Um, I mean, mostly what we're coming back to here uh, is the libertarian um, angle. It, yeah, is the libertarian idea that um, you do not aggress against yeah. others. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, so it, the but the legal question is here it is aligned with the libertarian position, which is yeah. that if you are not the aggressor, you are entitled to defend yourself. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think that the the defense proved that without a doubt, and the state certainly failed miserably to try to prove otherwise. Yeah. Um, in this case, I think they, they came to the right conclusion. He was definitely defending himself. He There's other questions about whether he should have put himself in that position in the first place and so forth, but that's not really relevant. No, and, and it shouldn't be. Um, because, yeah, I mean, people have a right to, to go and do. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, to, to say, well, he shouldn't have been there, well, nobody else should have been there either. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> like, um, at that point, why don't we just lock everybody in their homes? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if, if that's going to be the stick, you know, I mean, you don't have a right to defend yourself if you left your house. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the scary part of this is if they had come to a different conclusion, because I, I do think that the state is working towards uh, uh, – a state of things um, where you're not allowed to defend yourself, where yeah. you're, you're only, the only thing that you can rely on is the state to defend you. And it seems very clear that you can't actually rely on the state to defend you. Well, no, because in many cases, the, um, especially with law enforcement, they're not required to. Yeah. Like, I mean, we've talked about that on the podcast. See, a episode few times. 13. <laughs> yeah. We talked about remember. that extensively. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, uh, to protect and serve, I think was the title of the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, and that leads into the the other case, I think, which um, is the Ahmad Arbery case. And we talked about this when it came up. I think we talked. I, I definitely talked about it. it might have been. I, yeah. Now it, that it was early in 2020, so it might have been when we were not together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, definitely talked about this case when it first came up. And in in this case. Um, there had been some burglaries in an area of uh, homes under construction. And um, these three guys chased down a man who was running fr after leaving one of these construction sites. Um, and they stopped him to make a citizen's arrest. And uh, the guy um, who they stopped went for one of them's gun. They tried to stop him with guns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they like chased him down in a truck. Um, and you know, one of them jumped out of the truck and they, they w brandished their guns and, and tried to stop him. And he tried to take one of the guns away and he ended up getting shot. Yeah. Um, and, but again, and, and so in the end here, um, the question is once again, like who was the aggressor? Yeah. And I said at that time, um, that I thought that these guys should be tried for some, some level of murder. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that you could go for murder one, like you know, yeah. preconceived, etc. But uh, yeah. certainly, I thought that it was murder then. Yeah, um, and that it was perfectly reasonable for this guy to have gone for the weapon because, as far as he's concerned, he just got stopped by two guys with a gun, and he's yeah. got to defend himself. Well, he doesn't know what these guys' intention are, regardless mm -hmm. of what they're telling him. Yeah, like I mean, you're running down the street, and somebody pulls a gun on you. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know where this is going. The next thing you know, you're locked in their basement, you know, <laughs> right. having organs taken. Like, yeah. I mean, who the hell knows? Like, yeah, so. yeah fair enough. So, um, but this again has become a, a thing about race somehow uh, because the man who was shot was a black man um, and the three men involved. Now, it's two men with guns and one man with a camera, essentially, yeah. uh, with a cell phone camera. That, that, so um, it's uh, Greg and Travis McMichael. Uh, this is a father and son. And their neighbor, Roddy Bryan, was the guy with the cell phone. Yeah. Um, and they were, now their claim is that they were trying to make a citizen's arrest and that they were defending themselves when he tried to take the gun away. Yeah. And they shot him in self-defense. That just seems so flimsy to me. And the jury agreed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they came back quick, by the way, too. Yeah, it's like, like 10 you, hours. Yeah, if you look at the difference between that case and the Rittenhouse case, they took a lot longer <laughs> with Rittenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think the Rittenhouse case is actually... Was, is, was way more clean is, cut. <laughs> at least as clear cut, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, But they came back and they said uh, they convicted all these guys of murder. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that's the right... 
that's the right verdict again. I, I agree. Um, and when I talk about how quick, it, just, they had a lot more to decide on in this case mm-hmm. because they had to make each of those. Dis- they, there was a, quite a few charges, and they had to to make decisions based off or for each person involved yeah. because one the guy yeah. that had the camera didn't have quite or wasn't found guilty of quite as many charges as the other two. Yeah. But they're both they're all three looking at serious jail time. Yeah. Um, now, but the way the, the, now this should be one of those situations where you're like, okay, well the the justice system works, right? Yeah. Like, um, the, the, they came to the correct conclusion in both of these cases, but somehow, (laughs) uh, I read you those headlines from, um, major newspapers, uh, New York times, LA times, uh, Politico, um, and the AP, I read you the opening paragraph of the AP. Yeah. Uh, and they present it in such a racially charged manner yeah. um, that, uh, you know, uh, three white men in southern Georgia uh, hunt down a black man and blast him with a shotgun. And that's how they're presenting this. Yeah. Um, and they're leaving out some important bits of information there. <laughs> yeah. Now, like I said, I think that they were in the wrong and that they should be convicted of murder. Oh, absolutely. Um, as they were. But I guess this is what it comes down to. Um, and this is one of those things we are not so divided as they want us to be. Well, it, and it makes it to, to me when you read me off that you mm-hmm. get this picture in your head of a bunch of rednecks just like riding up on somebody and shooting them. And it, what they're trying to do is give you the impression that this type of thing happens all the time. Yeah. And that's not what the facts of the case are. Like even mm-hmm. the, the guys are absolutely guilty. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, it's, it's, not pre- they're not presenting it the way it occurred, you know, yeah. or giving you any kind of like I get, get that they, they they can't give you every detail of what happened, mm-hmm. but that's not like an accurate overview. Yeah, no, they're they're presenting it in a particular way. Yeah, um, in order to create that uh, that impression. Yeah, and so this is, I mean, I guess this is the big thing is that if you present everything as racially motivated then you create racism where it doesn't exist. Yeah. That like, this is a race is a thing that has been generally irrelevant to me, um, in my life. And it's becoming more and more relevant because it's become the, the important underlying factor of the way everything is presented politically. Yeah. It's it's having an impact on my life now in a way that it never did before. Yeah. And it's not because it's actually something that's relevant. It's because of the way the media and politics is is making it into something more than it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would I would tell you that I think we were absolutely a less divided country before Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's really kind of when it felt like all of this started to really start. Yeah. Well, and Trump, Trump made it so much worse. Trump's well, Trump, presidency. Oh, yeah. Trump. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with that. But mm-hmm. but you really look before, um, what, 2008, 2009? Like, I'm thinking that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, it de- it seemed like race after that became more and more of a focus mm-hmm. where it just wasn't before that. Well, and it, and it's not just race. Um, it's everything. It is race, gender, sexual orientation, yeah. religion. Like all of these things are becoming very important in all decision making, or at least the the presentation of everything by the media and by politicians. And um, I just go back to the same thing that I always go back to, which is that it is intended to divide us. Oh yeah. Because all of us plebes down here at the bottom. We're far less of a threat to the elites at the top if we're fighting amongst ourselves instead of fighting with them. Yeah. Well, I've heard an argument made before that that this was a, con- a, a, a considered or a concentrated effort after the Occupy Wall Street movement mm-hmm. that a lot of these groups got together and realized that this <laughs> there could be problems here and they needed to start dividing people up more. Yeah. Um, well, they're doing it successfully. I, like I said, I don't know if there's anything to that. I'm just saying it. the, the timeline seems to match up mm-hmm. um, as far as when all of this kind of started versus, you know. Yeah. Well, it, it's unfortunate because there's no there's no reason for it. There's yeah. no reason for it. Yeah. But on on the left or in the media or, you know, wherever you happen to be, um, if you present everything in terms of race, you can't be upset when race becomes something that people 
talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and so it's something that I could have very easily ignored through most of my life. Yeah. And now I can't. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's forced upon you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have to present, I have to argue against this kind of crap that comes out in the news media. Yeah. Neither of these cases are about race. No. They have nothing to do with race. They are, are both a question of who was defending themselves. Who is the aggressor? Yeah. And in both cases... Um, the person, like it came out on the side of the person that it should have. Yeah. Um, and in one case that's a white guy and on one case that's a black guy. And now you can also make the point that for the black guy, it's not quite as good because he's already dead. Yeah. Um, well, I do think you can make an argument in the Arbery case that the reason they came after him was because he was a black guy. Probably. I would, I would concede that wholeheartedly just mm -hmm. because... I mean, I guarantee you if it had been a white guy running up the road, those guys wouldn't have went after him. But it, it doesn't really matter because the fact of the matter is that that's what happened. Yeah. And they got what they deserved because of what they did. Yeah. Um, so, I mean... Well, it, and on the other side, you could make the case that the, the protests and riots could have been about anything other than Black Lives Matter and Kyle Rittenhouse would have still been out there exactly. defending property. Yeah. Oh, I agree with that. Absolutely. So there you go, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, uh, all yeah, it's it's all a mess, man. Um, I don't know. That's all I really have about the two cases. I just I, yeah. I've gotten really frustrated with the focus on race because yeah. it just doesn't hold the kind of relevance well, that. And it goes back to I'm pretty sure I've said this on the podcast before. I mean, we don't live in a racist country. Race yeah. relations are well. I would say pre-Obama were better than they've ever been in this country, mm -hmm. and they've only gotten worse since then. And we don't we we know who to blame. It's not like it's a question. Well, well who do we look to and who's caused this problem? We know mm -hmm. who caused this problem. It's the media. Yeah, the the media has created this for whatever reason. Like I don't know well, because why. Because conflict drives clicks. Yeah. Well, and, you know, maybe it drives up with when social media really started getting big. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's a factor in this somehow, too. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but but something, it, the media is to blame, and that's who we need to be looking at. Because mm -hmm. the, at the end of the day, like I say, there's very rarely do you do you encounter anybody that's, like, truly a racist. Yeah. Like, it's just not out, and I live in the South. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm not going to say it never happens. Like, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I've heard people make, you know, remarks I don't agree with, you know, mm -hmm. or something. I mean, it's yeah. out there, yeah. but they're not like running around hunting people. You know, they just have weird beliefs, yeah. you know. And it's on all sides. I've heard. Oh, yeah. yeah I've heard, uh, you know, comments that I disagree with from people just about every race, yeah. certainly that I can think of. Yeah. Um, and, so, uh, you know, but... But at the end of the day, we don't live in a country where, where racism is a real problem. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're, you're not not getting jobs because, like, that type mm -hmm. of thing's just not happening. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's particularly bad for black people because it breeds this kind of victim mentality and this kind of fatalism that nothing you do will matter because, you know, the, the white man's, man's holding always you down. against yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that that's a, a terrible way to view your world yeah. um, because it, it saps motivation. And, um, like there, there have so, certainly been situations in my life where it seemed to me that there was some factor about me particularly that made it so that it was going to be harder for me to get to where I wanted to go within this organization or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you know, the best thing that you can do there is just take it as a challenge. Like if I have to be twice as good as everybody else to progress at the same level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can be twice as good as everybody else. Yeah. Well, and it's all on how you how you how you handle that, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, successful people are gonna be successful, yeah. and some people just are not gonna be successful. <laughs> it's yeah. just, and, and it's it's horrible to say that, mm -hmm. but it, it is. Well, there the is a mindset it is that the impacts truth. this. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, it's there, you know. Um, but I, I think that by um, raising people to believe that the system is working against them, you you kind of instill or put them on a pathway to that mindset of failure. Well, I would and, uh, I would argue that there is a system that it's not just it's working against everybody. Well, and yeah. it's, and it's called the government. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's the root that focus that energy in the right places, people. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Like, 
Um, the system that's working against uh, poor people, it's not rich people. It's the government. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the government that, that allows this kind of runaway inflation by uh, inflating the money supply. Yeah. Um, uh, by inflating credit, by reducing uh, interest rates. Um, the people that get to take advantage of that are the people at the top. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't matter what race they are. And yeah. the people at the bottom <laughs> suffer. And yeah. it doesn't matter what race they are. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, and so I guess shifting gears a little bit, uh, the uh, Durham investigation into the origins of the Russia Gate. Ah, <laughs> scandal i remember russia russia gate because <laughs> it won't go away yeah it won't go away yeah. um and i don't understand how anybody honestly at this point can still be behind this that's paying any attention at all because at every step this thing has been debunked and fallen apart and it's it goes back to the same thing we talked about in the written house case it goes back to a media that is misinforming the public yeah. Like it, well that's part of it. There's also a uh, a partisan part of it. There um, is a there partisan is the angle, yeah. uh, the old Trump derangement syndrome a, yeah. as well. Um but in the end uh it seems clear that I mean like we started off with the Carter Page thing. Remember like Carter Page and this I don't know if these two aspects of the Russia Gate thing are, were colluding or not like yeah. whether the the um intelligence or uh, law enforcement side of it was colluding with this um, this media side of it that the the steel stuff represents but um, you know you had Carter Page and and George Papadopoulos mm -hmm. um, now Carter Page is the best example because they the FBI used him and his c contacts with Russians <laughs> um, to get the FISA warrant yeah that they used to spy on the Trump campaign because they got the two hop rule yeah. Um, and just bear, like, forget that it's Trump. Actually, yeah. I wonder if I can get through this without saying Trump again. <laughs> um, okay. So Carter Page worked for a, a presidential campaign, the Republican nominee for president. Yeah. Um, and he had contacts with Russians, yeah. which the CIA was aware of because when he was approached by the Russians, he contacted the CIA. And he was working as an asset of the CIA in his contacts with the Russians. Yeah. The FBI uncovered these contacts with the Russians when they were seeking, well, maybe. This okay. is alleged, I guess. Um, when they were possibly seeking a way to attack the Republican nominee for president. Yeah. Um, under the previous Democrat administration. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, so... They contact because one of the first things that you do when you have somebody of interest is that you contact other other agencies and say, do you know about this guy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Well, the CIA replied, yeah, he's working for us. Yeah. yeah. OK. The FBI just hid that <laughs> piece of information when they presented the first FISA request. Yeah. All right. So they already knew that Carter Page was not actually somebody who, who a, a might Russian be working agent. with the yeah. Russians. Yeah. He was working with the CIA yeah. against the Russians. Yeah. Um, and the FBI just ignored that when they knowingly yeah. ignored yeah. that when they presented their request for a FISA to get um, permission from the FISA court, which is already a problem because it's a secret court, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. I, you know, not like we support the FISA court. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, to, to get this uh, ability to surveil him. Um, and so they already knew that they were lying to the FISA court when they requested the warrant. Yeah. All right. So we know about that. That's already been uncovered. And yeah. that is one of the big things, the big reasons that the FBI was investigating the Republican nominee for president's campaign in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well now, uh, Durham has had been placed in charge of finding. Oh, of course. Then you have um, what's his name, um, Mueller. The Mueller investigation that turned up nothing. Yeah, right. nothing at all. He presented a thousand pages of nothing. Yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, Durham was was placed to seek to do an investigation into the origins of the whole conspiracy. Yeah. All right. So they already, and I can't even think of the first guy's name. They already um, arrested somebody uh, about it. There's already been one indictment about it, but this is the most recent one is Victor Danchenko. 
Um, now, Victor Danchenko is the primary source for what became known as the Steele dossier, okay. uh, which was all these um, allegations against the Republican nominee for president um, that uh, he was connected with the Russians. It included the whole the P tape scandal and like all of that oh, yeah, stuff, right? Yeah. A bunch of really salacious um, things that could be used as, as uh, compromising material by the Russians, uh, supposedly um, to uh, to blackmail the Republican nominee for president. Yeah. Um, now, Viktor Danchenko was arrested now for lying to the FBI um, about this information, and he was lying to Christopher Steele. Um, and uh, Danchenko was also fed lies... If the stuff that he didn't make up himself, yeah, <laughs> essentially, yeah. um, was fed to him by a man named Charles Dolan, who is an old Clinton knight. Um, he was on the, I think he was on Bill's original campaign for presidency, this oh, guy yeah. Charles Dolan. Yeah. And at the time uh, that all of this was going on, the Steele dossier stuff, um, he was working for a PR firm uh, that was registered as a foreign agent uh, for Russia. Huh. All right? Yeah. So, um, and then... You back up even farther, and you find that Steele was hired by Fusion GPS, um, who was paid, uh, and Fusion GPS was paid by the Democrat Party, um, and uh, and the Clinton campaign through the Clintons' uh, law firm. Really? Yes. Um, and then this other stuff that was going on was this information loop thing. Now Steele was an old MI6 guy, sure. um, and uh, and he knows how to play the game, right? So um, he was leaking information from the Steele dossier to news media. And when it was printed, he was presenting himself as a confirming source. Oh, yeah. Even though he was the original source. The original, yeah, right. So he's leaking the information and then when um, and presenting himself as somebody that knows about this stuff, too, so that he'd be contacted by the media and asked to confirm the information that they had been leaked. <laughs> been but leaked. he was the person that leaked it in the first place. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what this does present though, in the end, um, is that it seemed, and, and there's even more connections like, uh, Steele was introduced to, um, Danchenko by Fiona Hill. Uh, she was a big part of the Ukraine gate, yeah. uh, stuff. Um, also, uh, Clinton Knight, as far as I know, yeah. um, <laughs> I guess what I'm getting to is, in the end, it seems like the only conspiracy, the only collusion with the Russians was from the Clinton campaign against the Republican nominee for president. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least as as regards the Steele dossier. As yeah. for the FBI stuff, a case could be made that it was the, the standing Democrat president that yeah. <laughs> was part of the conspiracy wow. uh, against the Republican nominee, the opposition nominee. Yeah. Um, and this is some crazy stuff that people should be really scared about. Yeah. And I like, so I've got, you know, I, I know a guy who is listening to this and going, Oh, you Trumper, blah, 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 Russia gate conspiracy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I heard it myself. Uh, he stood there in front of the cameras and asked Russia to get those, uh, those emails. Yeah. Um, you remember exactly what he said? Uh, I, I just told you earlier. Now I'm trying to think back. I was trying to set you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, crap. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he said that um, if they could find those emails, that there would be plenty of people that would pay lots that of money for That would pay lots of money for them. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, now, I, I think that it's pretty clear that the whole thing was a joke. But even if it's not a joke, like, it's not collusion to call that out in that way. Yeah. Um, and... The important thing I think to remember is that why would you not be interested in the behavior of the previous secretary of state that could be the next president? Well, like yeah. if there's anything that is uh, that is illegal or, or unethical yeah. or whatever in that information, who cares what the source is? If yeah. the if the emails are real, like like the Democratic Party stuff yeah. um, that was leaked through WikiLeaks, right? 
what the media did immediately was focus on that these emails were stolen, that these emails were stolen. Yeah, well, but the important part is what's in the emails, don't yeah. you think? Like, that's the... <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, you're not saying that the emails aren't real, you're just saying that the emails are stolen. Yeah. And it presents some really bad stuff that the Democrat Party was involved in. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter what the source is, really, does it? What yeah. matters is what the material is. What matters is the content. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this... This whole thing just continues to break down, and uh, but I think that the important part to be concerned about um, is that it does seem possible, at least, and maybe even likely, that um, whoever is in power has the capabilities of using the intelligence apparatus and the media to attack the opposition. Yeah. And, you know, that's just some third world stuff that we don't want going on here. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree. This is how you end up with a one-party system of communists. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it just makes it all that more, much more of a fight, like, when you go for election time. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, it's just because it, you don't know what to believe because you don't know. You can't trust the intelligence agencies. And you can't trust the media. Yeah, and you definitely can't trust the media. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so you have to come to sources like ours. Yeah, <laughs> that dig down and find all this junk out. <laughs> yeah, we're the trustworthy source. Yeah, yeah. There's there's not a whole lot of them out there anymore. <laughs> yeah, it does seem. Actually, there's more and more. Well, there's they're well, just they're small. They're just well. I was fixing to say they're all independent, mm -hmm. small like us. Yeah, yeah. But that other than that, like you definitely can't trust the, the big ones. Like, yeah. There's just and it's a shame. Like we should have a me a, a good media would keep all of this type of thing in check. Mm -hmm. Um, but we don't have that anymore. Um, in any way. Yeah. So. Well, and I, I've said over and over again um, that I don't think that the person who's sitting in the Oval Office really matters anymore. Yeah. Uh, I think this country is run by a bunch of entrenched bureaucrats and that they use the apparatus of the state. And I think that this is a clear example, that they use the apparatus of the state to, um, to achieve the victory for the person that's most in line with their agenda. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and another part of that that we talked about recently is that it, it's becoming more and more apparent that if you are opposed to the current um, administration's agenda, that you are now being labeled as a domestic terrorist or an enemy of the state. Yeah. Um, and, like, go back and watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, th uh. this is, these are dangerous pathways that we're taking here. Yeah. And and we the people need to take back our country. Well, I mean, all you, history is littered with with instances where this type of thing ends badly. Yeah, like it's just it's there, man. Like, <laughs> and this is why you need a, an anarchist society. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, there the the state is always a danger, no matter how big it is, because it will it it is in the nature of the state to grow. Yeah. And we've seen ours get as big as you can ask for. Yeah, as Dave Smith says, right? Like, yeah. um, it was created to be the smallest government in history, and it's become the largest. Yep, yep. Here we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. uh, anyway, um, I guess that's it. Uh, do you have anything else that you wanted to... Oh, uh, there was nothing, something else. Right? Yeah, nothing big, but I just wanted to kind of throw this out. I hadn't got to look into it much, but it keeps popping up in my news feed today, or on my phone today. So, um there's a new variant popped up in Africa, COVID variant. Okay. Um, and supposedly it's... Is it the Omega variant? Have I, we gotten I don't, there yet? I don't know if they, they've, okay. um, they've named it. Uh, maybe they have. Like I said, I hadn't <laughs> done as much looking, but um, I think that I Biden's, Biden's this, already so. shut down um, travel from Africa. And um, there, that guy is such a racist. Well, you know when it popped up because I literally <laughs> got a headline that popped up on my um, my news alert, and yeah. that's what it's it, that what it said was was Biden was shutting down travel coming from Africa, and I was like, dude, if Trump had done that, can <laughs> oh, you no, can no. you imagine? No, like no, I really can't. <laughs> I just. But anyway, we'd be, we'd be impeaching him tomorrow. I'm sure. Egg, oh, exactly. Mm. Um, but this variant supposedly is supposed to be um, resistant to the spike proteins that are that are produced by the vaccine, or the vaccine has you produce, or yeah. Okay, so the vaccine has you produce spike proteins with the idea that um, your body will attack them and get and 
be, I don't know, attuned essentially to fight off these spike proteins. So, yeah. I mean, I, the only way, are they saying then, well, you don't know. I don't um, really know. But, like I said, it's just what I've caught from headlines today. Like that would suggest that this is a COVID variant that doesn't use spike proteins. Nah. But that's like the defining feature of coronavirus. I, I mean, like I said, we need to dig in a little more and see. But apparently, that's like the fear. And really, the only thing I want to say about it is because we've we've been pretty hard on the vaccine on this podcast <laughs> with good reason. Yeah. Um. But like the when I when these headlines start popping up today, it really did kind of scare me because mm-hmm. I don't want to go back to 2020 again. Mm-hmm. And say what you will about the vaccine, but it's brought us out of that environment at least somewhat like not completely but we li- we're living in a better society today than we were a year ago well it depends on where you are europe is locking down all over the place yeah and has been and ha- yeah with 80 plus percent vaccinations yeah. rates um so i don't think that we ever really escaped there there might have been a like a psychological relaxation um because the vaccines were out there yeah but you know we can't have that. Yeah. We gotta well, keep people in fear. And that's that's the other thing that, that worries me is like I just I don't I don't I think we're immune from it where we're at down here. Like I, I think that the South has pretty well decided we're gonna go on living our lives. Yeah. Um but I tell you, man, it's it, it's this this is not going away. <laughs> yeah. Well, they haven't quite gotten everything that they want out of it, I suppose. And yeah. but it's been more effective than anything that they've ever tried. It is. Well, that's just it. Like, that, where is, where this is, is all this of this This was leading? far more effective than the terror war. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, uh, yeah, as far as getting what they've wanted. Yeah, as far centralizing as control, power. Yeah, yeah, as far as control is concerned, there's no there's no question. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think we, you get here without the terror war, though. Like, yeah. I, think that, I think that the terror war led us to where we're at now, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, I don't think people would have put up with this if it had just all came at once like this. Actually, you know what? Uh, Ronald Reagan said something about, gosh, I wish I could remember the quote, um, where he said uh, that the that the uh, worst thing that could happen in terms of um, pushing towards a more authoritarian power in the U.S. was a medical emergency. Really? Yeah, yeah. that um, the fear of a medical emergency... Um, could be used to push us more towards authoritarianism than any anything else that he could conceive. Yeah. Well, it definitely makes sense. Um, I mean, we're watching it unfold mm-hmm. in front of us right now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you just got to stand up. I mean, there's there's nothing to do but to resist this. Yeah. Um, and I, I By wish By the way, that that's we... coming on a shirt soon. I'm just going to put resist. Right across the chest. <laughs> yeah, that's already been co-opted by somebody. Oh, it, has remember it? it was resist Trump. Oh no, I can't wear that. <laughs> no, you can keep wearing it. Then people will say, "Yeah, man." <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh no, do not comply. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. That's yeah. the shirt I'm getting. I think I've seen it out there already, but I still every time I go through the airport and I have to go through that stupid machine. Um, when I'm standing there next to the security guy and I got to put my arms over my head in that machine, I still every time I say this is not the pose of a free man. <laughs> this is not the pose of a free man. Yeah. I'm telling you. I want to make sure that they hear me say that every <laughs> single time. Yep. Like go home and think about that one, buddy. But yep. he he probably doesn't care because he's like he's feeling the power. He's the control guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I bet he's got to walk through one of those things when he flies down too. Probably. Yeah. You don't think they got a little special card? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. My yeah. my dad used to. Did he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except <laughs> he said there was more trouble than it was worth. He had to do all this paperwork to get through <laughs> airports. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, oh well. Uh, all right. Well, I guess that's it. We got in a second episode this week, so we're like back on schedule, sorta. Um, so maybe next Thursday, right? Like that is that the plan? We're, yes. We're done with the. Uh, other. Softball's done. I'm trying to think. It seems like there's something. What's next week? I can't think of anything. We'll record next week one way or the other. It may not be Thursday, though. Okay, well, we'll figure that We're out. We're going to record next week, though. All right, well, <laughs> just stick around. Keep your eyes on the little screen. We'll pop up eventually. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, while you're waiting, um, follow us on uh, Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, like and share. Tell your friends. Um, is that all the stuff? I think that's all the stuff, man. All right. Well, we'll be back in roughly a week <laughs> when yeah. we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short. Live free. Ciao. Later. Later.